because it's the best of both worlds. It's a, uh, get it? It's it's a line from a song about, like, the best of both worlds. I mean, be a barbarian and a blood rager. Why not? Arms up, shrug. Dun, 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 dun. B-Sides! Hello, and welcome to Pathfinder B-Sides. I am your host, Professor Phoenix. Today, we will be going over a really simple, really straightforward thing for the Blood Rager. It's the Primalist. Yeah, let's get to it. The, uh, the flavor text for the Primalist is... While Blood Rage powers come from the very essence of a Blood Rager's being and are often strict and immutable, some Blood Ragers tap into ancient traditions and primitive wisdom to enhance their rages with something more primal. The primalist mixes his bloodline with more traditional rage powers. I, I should honestly put music behind some of these because I feel like it would up the tension, up the dramaticism. But we're not going to do that right now. Uh, this is just going to be a quick and easy one, man. The uh, the primalist, the main draw for it is going to be this badass choice right here. Primal choices. At fourth level and every four levels thereafter, a primalist can choose to either take his bloodline power or two barbarian rage powers. If the primalist chooses rage powers, those rage powers can be used in conjunction with his blood rage and his blood rager level acts as his barbarian level when determining the effect of those blood rage powers and any prerequisites any other prerequisites for rage power must be met before a primalist can choose it this ability does not count as the rage power class feature for determining feet prerequisites and other requirements this ability alters the bloodline class feature. So since this one is so simple, let's go down the line, all right? Let's say uh, our, our Blood Rager, all right? We're going to call him Bill. Blood Rager Bill. Blood Rager Bill wants a bloodline that's going to make him badass, left field, and a little bit confusing. So we're going to go with the new Medusa one, right? Where um, the the new Medusa bloodline, where let's uh, let's go straight to the uh, the archives of Nethys on this one. It says you would basically be getting uh, cause fear at seventh level, resist energy at tenth level, hold person at thirteenth, and stone skin at sixteenth levels. You have access to the bonus feats: alertness, blind fight, greater fortitude, improved initiative. Improved unarmed strike, intimidating prowess, and toughness. You have access to all these guys. And then also the bloodline powers. And guys, I'm not going to go all the way in detail into what each and every one of these means. Only what the options are. So the bloodline offers, uh, the it goes, the cold fury of your cursed rage can freeze others in their tracks. So at first level, you get gaze, where, you know, it looks like you can choose to have a target within 30 feet of you have their speed halved versus a fortitude saving throw that's you know you're based on your constitution modifier wait what that's pretty awesome cool at fourth level you get gift of the ancients where you get a plus two resistance bonus on saving throws against gaze attacks and to resist poison i feel like that would be uh you could totally trade that out um, and then you get Staggering Gaze at 8th level, where when a creature is affected by your gaze bloodline power, it is staggered in addition to being slowed. So now it can only move one, uh, it can either only move or attack, it can't do both. So that could be worth it depending on how badass you want your bloodline to be. Uh, and then also at 12th level you get something called Viper's Touch. You grow two sets of venomous claws resembling the teeth of a serpent. These claws are primary natural attacks that deal 1d point, yeah, 1d8 points of damage. And uh, it has a really shitty uh, fortitude save where it's 10 plus half your level plus your constitution modifier. So at 12th, that's DC of 10 plus 6 plus, let's assume, 3. So 10 plus 6 plus 3 
is 19. The save would be 19 for a uh, Viper's Venom. And what that does is it does 1d3 strength damage. And you only have to cure it one time and you're done. And psh, garbage. Let's, let's double it up. And then you get Stone Resistance and True pet Petrification. I feel like I'm going too hard on this Bloodline, so I'm going to back off. But you get my point. It has some things that are solid and some that aren't. So next, at fourth level, you can pick out either two rage powers or one bloodline power, which, if I remember correctly, was the, uh, yeah, that one. Um, so you don't get to trade out your first level one, but you can do the fourth level, the eighth level, the twelfth, and the sixteenth, and the twentieth. And what you can do at these choices, if we remember correctly, the uh, the gift of the ancients was a plus two to saves versus very specific things. So we're gonna say no to that, and we're gonna pick up some rage powers where you can take stuff like brawler, breath taker, uh, erratic charge. Erratic charge is always kind of cool where you can basically move five feet and then charge. Uh, that's pretty baller. You can get knocked down. You can get the Linorm Death Curse, Fjord. Cause why not? You can you can get two of these at each you know every time you get a chance to level up from your uh, from your Blood Rager stuff. So I just I think it's a pretty good archetype. I can see that it's only one line. So if you really wanted to, you should be able to stack it with other archetypes like Blood Rider, Hag Riven, Rage Shaper, Spell Eater. What you can do Spell Eater in this? I'm we're going to talk about stacking arch archetypes at some point, but not today. The important thing about today is that you guys understand exactly what the Primalist is. Now, side note, this would be great for just like, you want to be the big dumb sloth in the group, and then suddenly whenever things happen, you're like, light up! Arr! And you go like, roar, attack. And I, I guess what I'm saying is that this would be a pretty sublime archetype to try out to use uh i could see it being good in a one shot because you know beefcake or if you really wanted to do it throughout a campaign maybe you're 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 fighting between your your inner self where you know you have all these demonic abilities you have the the taint is in your blood you've you know and you're you're trying to fight between that and what your tribe says your totem should be so it's either Go with the sign of the demon or go with the totem of the bear. You know, like, do you, how, how do you adjust to having all these things? Um, the best part about this archetype is all it does is alter the bloodline class feature. It doesn't remove anything. It doesn't stop you from taking anything. It's literally at first level when you're making your character, you can go, you know what? I don't know what I'm going to want to do. But being a barbarian that can cast spells would be cool. And also having the Blood Rager thing where you have, like, bloodlines. That's kind of cool, too. Um, you can literally choose whenever you want whatever you're doing. I mean, once you make the choice, you can't change it unless, you know, you retrain or something. But that's neither here nor there. That's that's just right there. Um, so, yeah, guys, thanks for paying attention to my little rant on the primalist uh i hope you guys have fun playing it as much as i did looking it over and going shabam shabams i would also like to point out that probably the greatest app to use when making your characters whether it be you know your character an npc a villain i mean it ugh, it is endless the different things you can do with this app. This dude makes it every day. It's called Path Builder. You should go check out his work. It is amazing. He has all the spells from all the books. He has all the classes, all the archetypes. Almost, he's still working on it, but I'm not going to rag him too hard on this because he does a lot of work. He does all the skills. If you have an issue, he pretty much fixes it on the spot or within the day. This guy is amazing. I'm talking about Red Razzers himself. Anyways, you should go check it out. It's called The Path Builder. Uh, it's only available at the Google Play Store 
as of right now. Um, I don't know if there's any plans to put it onto the iPad, iPhone, i store, Apple store. I don't, I don't know. It's not there though. It's only on Google Play. Um, it is very accessible to use, especially on a tablet, uh, on a cell phone. Um, man, like I really wish I could go into more detail about this amazing, amazing app that Red Razors has put together. Um, download it, try it out. Uh, go make yourself a really good villain for your game or get your build all nice and set up. Um, he also, at the beginning of the section, you literally can't see my hands because I'm trying to mime it. But literally, he uh, one of the very first questions when you download the app is going to be, what books is your game allowing? So you can select the books. If you're only playing a core-only game, that's going to influence the, uh, the skills, the spells, the feats, the classes allowed, the archetypes allowed, which honestly, I don't know if there's any actual archetypes in the core book. Huh. Anyways, you have access to a whole leap of things. So definitely download it. It's worth your time. It's worth your effort. And then uh, um, the most important thing about this is that you guys just have fun. Uh, so anyways, um, please feel free to join our Discord. You, we can talk about this. We can argue it over about how garbage this archetype is. Or if you know one that does this but better, let me know. I have fun arguing. And honestly, I don't feel like I get to argue that often. So, you know, let's do that. Uh, also, there is a Patreon. In order to keep these videos nice and ad-free and not having YouTube go... Hey, here's an ad in front of your video. I know that your video is educational and all that stuff, but here's an ad about foot fungus. Let's let's just cut that out, all right? I don't want to do ads. I don't like ads. I don't like it when I watch other people's videos. And in the earlier videos, they're like, hey, so we're never going to do ads, but donate. And then like I see their their Patreon is like super baller, but they're, they're still doing ads. Like, que pasa, guys? Um... And then the, the, the last little bit on this is going to be, I honestly just hope you guys have fun. Go down to the comments if you enjoyed this. You know, like and subscribe. If you want to know as soon as my videos come out, even when I'm just testing the video to make sure the sound isn't all stuck to the left, like literally hit that notification bell. I don't know when you do that. I don't, I don't, it doesn't tell me that you've hit the notification bell and there's like 15 notifiers or anything like that. It's just... I put out videos every once in a while, and I want you guys to know when I do. And so that way you guys can look at it and go, Phoenix, you're garbage. Or Phoenix, you're awesome. It can go either way. Um, anyways, y'all, please keep it easy. Keep gaming. Kick butt. Tick names. Get a nat 20. And a whole bunch of other outro slogans that I have no idea what I'm doing. Shabams! I don't have a catch line or a catchphrase. To play me out of the video. So I'm just gonna sing and sing. Until you guys just click off. Don't forget the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm just gonna thank you. For watching the video.